Yo, what is up my empathic ninjas and warriors? This is your boy JC Desmond. Welcome to Love Over Narcissism. In today's topic, we're going to be talking about changing the narrative and shifting the balance of power after the discard. So whenever you get a chance, please like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel, do all the necessary things to support a YouTube channel such as this one. And make sure to hit that bell icon for more notifications of videos dropping. So let's get right into it. One of the most common things I get asked from people who have been discarded by narcissists. Well, first they tell me, you know, I feel I feel lower. I feel I feel like trash, empty. I don't I feel like I, I'm worth nothing. And and I want to know how is it that you were able to to heal so quickly from the discard and, and, and the abuse and the, and the trauma bond. And for the people out there, like I'm no therapist, right? I'm not a doctor or anything like this, but I can tell you that what I've told a lot of other people how to do this, it worked for them, right? People are feeling like they are worthless after narcissistic abuse. They're feeling like they are not attractive or desirable anymore that they're not worthy of love and and i just want to say that this is exactly what the narcissist wants this is exactly what the narcissist wants to do to you they want to break you so that you can feel powerless so that you can feel like you are not worthy you can feel like you are not desirable and the reason they do this is because Understand something that narcissists live really shitty lives, right? On the outside, you could be seeing them going to on going on vacations and all this and that, but they live they live the kind of lives that are no matter what happens, no matter what they do, they are ungrateful. They they can never truly be in the moment or happy. They're always running away from that true self. Um, everything they do is just to get away from that true self, but they have to keep doing it or else they are, they face their true selves. But the narcissist really does this is because they do this to you because they want you to depend on them. Everything is about control with the narcissist, right? When you control something, you have the power over it. Narcissists need to control everything. That's what gives them power. Once they lose that control, they lose that power. So how do, how do, you, how do you get that power back? You know, for me, what I did just after the discard and, uh, you know, because for all the people who know my situation, um, we had broken up. And then for like about an, uh, maybe a month or two, we were still kind of talking. We weren't romantically speaking because I didn't want to even want to go there anymore. But we were talking and there was just this this cognitive dissonance in my head that was like, you know, she she did what she did. But then and I was like, yeah, but she's a good person. She's not really bad. You know, and, and I have already been studying narcissism because she, a lot of the red flags she gave me led me to realize that yeah, she's, she ticks those boxes. And so for the people who know my situation, about a month and a half or something after the discard, after the, the initial discard, I'm the one who initiated the final discard because narcissists don't truly discard you. They discard you or, or as they say, they put you on a shelf. And when they feel like they want to play with the toy, they come back and, and, and play with the toy. You being the toy. So what happened with me is that I went through a phase. When I, when I initiated the final discard, I went through a phase of extreme anger. And I'm talking about rage. I'm talking about I wanted to do everything from, from catch this woman in the street to, to, you know, I wanted to get this woman's ass kicked. You know, anything to get revenge. I wanted to do everything to make sure she understood that she was fucking with the wrong one. I hate to curse. I used to do it all the time, but I'm trying not to. But it's just how I felt at the time. And so how I got out of this is I started reaching out to friends. Right. And um, one of my good friends, um, he was a good friend of mine after the discard. Uh, he became a good friend of mine, and I really, truly look up to him. His name is Andy. And, you know, he started 
really filling my head with more positive things. And, and, you know, as good of a person he was, he's dealt with a lot of narcissistic people. But his thing was to always forgive and move forward. And I, I couldn't quite do the forgiving part yet. You know? But he started inviting me out dancing salsa because he, you know, he, he could dance salsa. He knows that I love salsa. We actually know each other from the, from the same social scene. He's actually a uh, former supply to the narcissist that we speak of um and one of the things that we started doing together is we started training because he's he's a very very incredibly physically strong individual and so i started training with him at his house um doing workouts and everything and i started getting my mind focused on myself and then as we talked about the situations and his uh his experience dealing with narcissistic people because he's dealt with plenty of them including the you know carla fagan (laughs) i have to say the name um more and more that he started to point out certain um things about this person the more and more i started looking at it as if it was just pathetic and i wasn't i was no longer looking at it as if she was this big bad uh evil thing that i had to conquer I was actually looking at it like a joke at this point, you know, and then we started clowning around and making fun of it. And then after a while, I started realizing that these people are just really genuinely sad and pathetic people. Like, they don't have happy lives, and they're desperate people, and they do incredibly stupid things, really stupid things, just to gain validation. More and more, he started telling me things like stories about how he witnessed the narcissist spying and stalking former sources of supply. And then, I, you know, I started focusing more and more on myself. But the main thing that got me to shift that power was, was how I changed the narrative. I changed the story going from how she abused to how desperate and pathetic she looks and i started looking at her more and more like wow what a what a pathetic human being you really have to be really pathetic and disgusting to do the things that you do just to gain supply and to gain validation because you hate yourself wow that's really gross and more and more i started looking at her as a joke and we i spoke to another friend of mine who helped come up with the carla fagan character and more and more this thing started becoming funny to me right and by this time, I had already had like a, a, a cool social circle. I started developing my social circle. I, I made more money. I started, I had a social life. I've already started dating people here and there uh, and everything. And, um, and I realized that the more and more funny I found this, the more power I was gaining back. And people were starting to notice it and people were starting to join in on the jokes, right? Now, this is me. This is me we're talking about. I tell people all the time when they tell me, how did you get your power back? I tell them, you have to 100% focus on yourself first, right? You have to take in all the emotions that you're feeling and you have to vent it out of your system. Be it that may be crying, that may be hitting a heavy bag, that may be screaming, whatever the case may be. Find your times throughout the day to, to seclude yourself and vent that intense emotion out of your system. Once you vent that intense emotion out of your system, you get up and you create a plan. Okay, what am I going to do today to stay active? Now, you have to force yourself out of this situation. You have to force yourself out. If you stay home ruminating on the narcissist or what happened, you're not going to get out of that situation. Now, one of the major, major things that I tell people is that you have to have a shift in attitude. You have to look at these people rather than, oh my God, this super powerful attractive person that i've been pining after to a low vibrational disgusting clown that you don't respect anymore this is how i did it right this might not work for everybody it worked for me and it's worked for a lot of people you start looking at them like what they truly are disgusting human beings that can never stay in a situation in a in a relationship can never hold down a job, don't take care of themselves hygienically. Uh, When they get older, they start to crumble and and decompensate. 
um, they're never truly happy. They're always depressed. They're always in and out of therapy for depression. They are always, uh, you know, uh, living reckless lives because they, they're always trying to fill that void that they have in their system. So they will dive into reckless um, sexual activity or get into alcohol and drugs or be into illegal activities. This is the real life of a narcissist. Not what they show you when they're on Facebook posting that they've been on vacation or they have the love of their life now or they're getting married and they're truly happy or they're in a crowd of people and they're smiling it up and looking like they're having a good time. That's a facade. The real life is what I explained to you before. The constant seeking attention the constant, uh, you know, in and out of relationships, uh, never holding down jobs, uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, sexual abuse. This is what their true life is. And once you start to realize who they truly are, start to look at them for what they truly are. Disgusting human beings that, for the most part, amuse you with their stupidity. Right? Start to change the attitude that what they did to you was not because you weren't worth it. What they did to you was because they knew you were worth it and they hated you for it. They tried to destroy you because you have true value. You have to focus on this. You have true value. And that's the reason why they tried to, to, to chop you down little by little. Because you're, you're like this high tree and they're like this small person that is standing to this tree. And the only way they can get to the top of this tree, they can't climb it because they, they lack the courage. They have to chop it down until the tree becomes their size. You understand? And once you start looking at them like they are a joke, you can start to proceed to focus on yourself even more and build yourself even more. Because the one thing the narcissist cannot do is build themselves up. They need you to build them up. You as an empath do not need any body to build yourself up. Let me repeat that. You as an empath need absolutely no one to build yourself up. You can do it by yourself. You can rebuild yourself and become a, the 2.0 version and become even better than what you originally were even before you met the narcissist. And by the time the narcissistic person comes back and sees you again, you're already on a level that they couldn't reach in the first, the, the level that you were before you met them, they couldn't reach, so they tried to chop you down. Well, now you're going to be on a higher level, and it's going to absolutely crumble them. And this is how you gain your power back. This is something that you have to do for yourself. This is something that you have to have discipline. You have to put your feet down and start moving forward. You cannot stay home thinking about why the narcissist did what they did to you. I'm telling you, the reason why they did what they did to you is because they were threatened by you. They were jealous of you. They hated you from the beginning because you have all these wonderful qualities that people genuinely love about you. And they wish they had these qualities, but they don't have these qualities. They know that people genuinely care for you. For who you are. And they know that people only care for them for the false representation that they show people, right? This is the reason why they try to chop you down. Now, in the very beginning, when they first got with you, they were, they were impressed with you. They were infatuated with you because narcissists dive into fantasy. They have the fantasy of the perfect mate. And in the beginning, you were the perfect mate. But when you showed them you were an actual human being, they resented you for it. You know? They wanted to chop you down for it. But they still know you have these wonderful traits that they can never have. Okay? So when you ask yourself the question, why did the narcissist do this to me? Because narcissists don't stay in relationships. Narcissists are jealous of every source of supply they come in contact with. So they must destroy them in order to feel better about themselves. And then move on to a different host to try to destroy even more. But the thing is that if they can't destroy you because they can't control you, they lose the power. It's just that simple. How do you gain your power back? You gain your self-esteem back. You gain your identity back. You start doing things that you truly love to do. You, you become passionate again about your life. You become passionate about your family, your friends, your, uh, you know, your goals. You start to put together a plan to accomplish these goals. When you accomplish these goals, what's going to happen 
is the narcissist might try to come back and might try to say things like, oh, hey, you know, I see you're doing good things. I'm proud of you. They're not really proud of you. They just want to find a way to get back in because, you know, a lot of them will feel like they're missing out on something. You know, that's that magical thinking, you know. And then they'll try to come back not realizing that you have already figured it out and you're on your path to moving forward and becoming stronger. So they'll come back and they'll try to do, make the same attempts to hoover you back in by telling you they're proud of you. They see all the things you're doing and, and, and everything. My ex tried to do this to me. You know, after I got out of um, surgery, I had spine surgery. I was a little overweight. I kind of gained my weight back, but that's neither here nor there because the woman that I'm with now loves me, so that's wonderful. But I got out of spine surgery, and I had lost a lot of weight, and I looked good. And she tried coming back around, and one of the things she, she did when she saw me, um, she, uh, she gave me like a big hug and was like staring me up and down. And, and the funny thing is that if I was still in my, in my BS where I was just like missing the narcissist, I would have probably like, I would have probably felt good about that. But I didn't. I actually thought she was disgusting when she did all this. She was staring at me up and down. And then later on, she sends me a message saying, oh, I just want to let you know that you look amazing and keep it up. Big hugs and besos. This is what she says. Big hugs and besos is like her ta her tagline, right? Shout out to you, Carla Fagan. And um, and then the very next day, she asked if I was gonna go to this like event. Uh, the next week, right? Oh no, no. But before that, excuse me. Then she sends uh, me another uh, another text saying, "Oh, and you felt really good." Like she was. I don't know if she was trying to have do like a sexual come on to see if I would bite on the bait she was putting out there, but I didn't, you know, I put like one of those, like, uh, the emojis that look like praying emoji, like the, the two hands uh, together as if you were saying thank you or, or whatever I put, I put that and I was just like, yeah, thanks. Then the next day she asked me if I was going to go to this event on Friday, like a salsa event called the gala. And, uh, and I said, yeah, I don't know. And of course that was the week that I discarded her. That I discarded her because I realized, yeah, this this broad is just kind of full of it and everything. Um, so she tried doing it too. That's what they and knowing that her and I had a couple of breakups that were that just you know would leave people to believe, hey, this isn't working out. But the narcissist won't see that. They'll see the fuel source regaining its power, and they have to get back in. They have to get back in because they have to gain that power over you. But if you focus on yourself, stay no contact, keep them away, regain your confidence, regain your self-esteem, start loving your life again, you will absolutely destroy whatever power they have and you will regain the power that you once had and you will actually become stronger than you ever were before. Remember something, narcissists are truly weak people. And the only power they can get is the power that you let them have. If you don't let them have this power, they, there's nothing they can do to hurt you. There's nothing they can do to control you. You will move on and become powerful beyond anything you felt before so focus on yourself love yourself respect yourself take care of yourself learn new things you know um focus on these goals and go out and just get them because at the end of the day you have the power to do so and the narcissist does not and that's the kind of power they will never have and they know this and with that being said I hope you guys got some motivation from this video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon for more notifications. I love you all. Um, remember to love yourself and respect yourself. As always, LOM, baby. Talk to you guys soon.